argue with the coroner's report, Miss Ayers. Lieutenant, my sister did not commit suicide. She had no reason to kill herself. She was happier than she's been in years. But no one could have gotten into the house. The doors and the windows were all locked from the inside. She did not commit suicide. Why would she catch a plane from Massachusetts, hire a car at the airport, and drive all the way to my house to kill herself? Well, there's no rationale with suicide, Miss Sayers. I understand how upset you are, no, but if you, you could No, you don't just... understand anything. If she was going to kill herself, there were worse times, like when our parents died, or when we were separated by different schools hundreds of miles apart, but not now. But you did admit that she was a melancholy girl. That she was lonely. Well, you hardly saw her during the past few years. Then ask her friends at school. We did. Did you try her ex-roommate, Lucy Dembro? Do you really think she would make that much difference? Yes, she was her roommate for two years. She knows Martha. Okay, Miss Sayers. We went to Miss Lucy Dembrow in Massachusetts and to some of the other classmates at the academy and the headmistress. No one could give us any further information. I can't accept that. There just isn't enough evidence for us to pursue it any further. I'm sorry. This is the emergency podcast system. This is not a test. Movies are bombing all over the country. They are posing as movies you already know. They may already be in your theaters, your neighbor's home, or even your own. Do not panic. Specialists have been dispatched. They will help you identify these pretenders and defend you against this invasion of the remake. Please stand by for further instructions. Welcome to the Invasion of the Remake podcast. I am your host, Jason Bishop, and with me today, as always, is Sam Stepanenko. Your dark overlord. No, not me. That's Jay. <laughs> <laughs> and coming in via the interwebs, Trish Cochlin. Yes, your high priestess. And yeah, I am Satan. Satan! Sat- <laughs> Satin? Satin. Satin? Satin. Well, that really Santa? changes the context of it, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> We're going to be doing something a little different this week, and if you guessed my hint last week, we are doing Satan's School for Girls. We've done some TV movies that are remakes of features, but we've never done a remake of a TV movie into another TV movie. Nope, this is the first. Yeah. I've seen this one come up on a few remake lists, and it's always kind of grabbed my eye, and I'm like, you know what? Now's the time. I'm going to pull the trigger on this. I want to watch it. I, that's half of the time how I choose things. Have I seen this? Do I want to watch it? Yes, I do. And it'll be a podcast today. With a title like that, how could you resist? Right? If anybody knows that has successfully submitted a fan challenge to us, I like a weird hook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or just an appealing title. Mm-hmm. And this had both. It definitely has an appealing title. And I mean, I've heard of this movie. I, this was the first time watch for both of these for me, though. Yeah, well, the 73 yeah. was actually quite acclaimed. It was an ABC movie of the week in 1973. It actually aired on September 19th, 1973. I don't remember it because I was seven months old. At least you were born. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. I was around. I gave it away. <laughs> I was I was still in testicles at that point. <laughs> Testicles and ovaries. That's where I was living at the time. Oh, that's that's good. You had a womb with a view. Yep. Bum, bum, bum. It's only going to get worse with the puns. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry in advance. But yeah, this was a very well-received movie of the week. It was produced by Aaron Spelling, if that name sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. Lots of teeny bopper bullshit television if it doesn't sound familiar <laughs> you really have been living under a rock you don't watch television yeah. you obviously don't watch television mm-hmm. and i know the name but i can tell you i don't watch most of his stuff and i might have steered clear if i'd known it was there in spelling but i'm glad i didn't well mm-hmm. his format changed a lot i mean he was responsible mm-hmm. for things like the love boat and stuff like that as well mm-hmm. so it's not like he only does like the 90210s and melrose places like that, that that's where he found his later in career successes and hey you know what kudos to him yeah he was beavering on for a number of years before he came to 90210 
Yeah, I was actually quite surprised that that he was around this early, actually, because he really didn't really hit his stride as far as knowing his name until the late 80s, early 90s. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when he started having like his really big hit stuff. But I'm guessing that was Renaissance. Hey, Love Boat was a big hit. It was a big yes. hit, yeah. Yeah, apparently this uh, TV movie did quite well, so I can see why he would go back to the well on this. And <laughs> it was produced again by Aaron Spelling in 2000. And <laughs> initially when it started, I thought they were going to be pretty identical, but oh, they, they go a different Maybe not unique direction. I actually really enjoyed the TV movie, the 73, for what it was and mm. for what they did with very little. And I have to agree with you. The 73, I, I was really dated, but mm. I liked where it went. Yeah. yeah and it, it was a very human drama. Yeah. They had to tell a compelling supernatural mystery without special effects without all of the tropes that you would have in a feature because they don't have that kind of money and they didn't have cgi back then so they had very little to work with to kind of keep you on your toes and keep the creep factor up well, and or the mystery up but there was more of a mystery it was more of a thriller it, yeah it was more of a thriller like i i may have blinked but i don't remember seeing anything actually supernatural no, well, there was. There was right Not at the Not till the end. Yeah, right at the end. But they deliberately kept it, I think, ambiguous. Yeah. So you weren't sure if this was just a human issue or some psychotic cult guy running this cult out of a school. Yeah. Like, is this really supposed to be Satan or not? <laughs> and I kind of liked that they didn't answer that question and, and then they kind of, kind of did but yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm like oh, i could have lived without that last little bit but that's fine yeah and that's a good point but yeah if, uh, for the most part yeah if, if they had left that out it's, i still would have really enjoyed it would have actually probably enjoyed it more well, yeah no i yeah. like the idea because it, like i said it was more of a human drama right is, is this a manipulative zealot who's taking advantage of young women kind of story rather than is he really satan or not yeah and i found the 2001 well, a bit gross, to be honest. <laughs> Not because of any kind of gore effects, just some of the stuff they were doing in there with the teacher going after the students. Yeah. But they kept doing a lot yeah. of misdirects. Uh, I think they had assumed that you knew the first movie and relied on that for their misdirects. Yeah, and they did a good job with that. I will say that. I was like, oh, I wasn't quite expecting it to go there. Yeah, it kind of turned into Carrie meets the craft. Mm-hmm. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Yeah. In fact, yes. I bet you that's what they were going for. Yeah. And the, I mean, there's a little bit of the 90210 Melrose in there too. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. With oh, the Charmed. And, and Charmed. I was yeah. thinking Charmed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? They may, this may be one of those things that inspired Charmed. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, well, he's got Shannon Doherty, who is also in Charmed. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they've got the witches, Charmed. It was interesting, but I like how Charmed kind of went a different direction than this one with the witches. Shannon Doherty kept being on these shows that were immensely successful, even without her, and went on actually longer than she was actually on the show yes. without her. <laughs> but, but, you know, mm-hmm. she she did really well for herself. I mean, even not being on Charm, she retained some ownership of it. So she got paid through all those seven, eight years that was on the air. Well, you know, Spelling must have really liked her because he kept hiring her even after she'd been fired off. Multiple Multiple stuff. Mul- of his yeah. shows. Yeah. Right? So- he really kept giving her a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. So there must be something about her that he liked. And you watch this movie and you can kind of see it, especially this remake version. And as much as I didn't care for it, she was the best actress in the film. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with you on that one, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, watching this, I finally understood Valerie's dislike for Julie Benz. (laughs) You know, I didn't mind her too much. I thought she was a bit wooden, but when she would be in the pentagram doing whatever she was doing and delivering the lines as dry as she could, I'm like, oh boy, is that your evil? Oh, okay. That's that's not good. (laughs) Yeah, and I I don't know if it's just like the timbre of her voice and delivering those types of lines just don't work. I mean, and the, to be fair, the dialogue that she was getting was in that, those moments was pretty fucking hokey. Yeah. And mm. I think she delivered it almost that way as a message going, yeah. this sucks. Yeah. I, there's a lot of people in the remake that were not good at delivering their lines. And there, some of them are huge. Some of them are Taraji huge stars P. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think she was on par with 
Shannon Doherty, she didn't get a lot of screen time, but she was good in the scenes that she was in. Like mm-hmm. you could see the future she had. She had menace. Out of everybody there, she kind of had menace. Yeah. And I mean, Kate Jackson was a veteran. So mm-hmm. she, I mean, she's in yeah. both of these movies. And yeah. I think she did a fine job in her Dean role in the remake. Uh, yes. I think she did just fine. Well, what I liked in the original, though, was like sort of the misdirect with the headmistress just being a pawn and not in charge of anything. Yeah, they did something weird with her because she was in on what was going on. But somewhere around the time when Clampett told her what to say to the rest of the students to get them out of there and whatnot, she had a complete meltdown. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And reverted to this juvenile state, mentally speaking. And it was interesting. I just wish we would have seen it. Like, it was just suddenly there. See, and not I, sure what happened. I, yeah, and I had an idea where it was she was one of the originals. I kind of had it in the back of my head maybe yeah. because he is Satan, he hasn't aged, and she was one of the first protégés. Oh, yeah. You could see that um, this wasn't his first rodeo doing mm-hmm. this. And yeah. He probably had been doing this for quite some time. And that was one thing they tried to bring into that remake was that there's a history of the five. Yeah. I thought the five was a bit hokey. It just felt like they were – Going for a witch stereotype. Witch stereotype, ripping off Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the one. And, yeah. Cause, and that's well, probably why I came back to this well, is because Buffy was hugely popular at this time. Oh, oh sure. absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure Buffy had a lot to do with it. And the craft was right around that time, yeah. too. So I'm not sure if it was before or after this, though. Uh, before. It was before, before yeah. 95, 96? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I thought it was a '90s movie. So, 2000, yeah, yeah. So they would have been pulling from the craft. Although I don't know if it was as successful as they could have been, but maybe I guess it was just hit with that right crowd. Yeah. And Aaron Spelling caught on to that and must have been a fan of Carrie. I was not a fan of the reveal of the psychic powers of Shannon Doherty. <laughs> oh, it was <laughs> speaking of hokey. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, yeah. all that freaking filler. Yeah. Let's guess cards. Can you do this? The whole romance thing? Well, just, and that's I mean, why it was there, was yeah. to try to build a connection with this guy so you would feel a little bit when he dies. Yeah, well, and, and see what the, his role in things as well. And you know, I, I give him that, that. They used him to great effect. Like, it's just mm. the way it was presented was the problem. I, I feel like it happened yeah. a little late in the movie, to be honest. Yeah, it felt rushed, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I felt like they almost took it about face halfway through. Like, oh, we need something. Yeah. Montage. Oh, she needs a relationship. And oh my God, she's going to fall in love with them right away. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was actually surprised that the movie, it was about almost 10 minutes longer than the original film. And being for TV, you were allowing for commercials and stuff. Yeah. They were like, well, we could either fill this time or fill it with commercial time. Commercial time was probably yeah. worth more to Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, probably, yeah. But I understood the purpose of it. It did lead to something later on in the story. Yeah, but he dies shortly after yeah. and the connection's just forming. I didn't feel like there was any chemistry no, in that yeah. relationship. And that's not surprising considering it wasn't about chemistry for him. He was doing a task, right? He was helping to uncover her latent psychic skills. But yeah, and it was, it was clumsy. When it was all said and done, it wasn't terrible. I did not enjoy the movie, but the way they manipulate the plot to get to her, they knew she Mm -hmm. was the chosen one. They tried to get to her through her sister, and they're basically doing all this other stuff to draw her towards the school. Now, in the original film, the death of the character's sister, um, this is Elizabeth slash Beth, the death of her sister motivates her to go to the school. The, The cops have deemed it a suicide. We see her at the opening of the film running away from the school, flying home. She's frantic. She's looking over her shoulder the hallway. And she gets to this house. Really nice house. Very nice house. Right? Oh, my God. I want to live there. What a view. Lots of glass. And the view is amazing, no matter where you looked. (laughs) Yeah. But when you're hiding, it's a bad place to go because she has to spend like 10 minutes closing curtains. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) And then there's the camera pushes in on her as she screams. She sees something off camera we can't see. Somebody's in there with her. But it's a locked room mystery now. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. when we find her, she is now hanging 
being found by the police. I, I'm not sure. Like they had a similar thing in the remake, and they, I'm not sure why the cops got there before uh, the sister. Like, uh, what are you? Inve- who called you? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> see, and that was the first. That opening scene was the first moment I knew. Oh, I'm like, oh, I see what you're doing, and yeah. I'm not sure I like it because I mean, they they gave you the figure in the ceiling right at the very beginning, and it's like, oh, yeah. you guys are going full on supernatural. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm like, I was, I was disappointed. I'm like, That's, I hope you do something different, but that was way too much reveal right at the beginning of the film. Yeah. What was dumb is there's that whole bit where she can figure out cards. And I'm like, for a movie where they talk a big thing about cards, they're not holding any to their chest at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good place to run the original trailer. Now, keep in mind, these are TV trailers. They're only going to run about 30 seconds, so no time to pee. (laughs) We'll Mm -hmm. we'll be right back. (laughs) Lieutenant, my sister did not commit suicide. She had no reason to kill herself. We went to some of the other classmates at the academy and the headmistress. No one could give us any further information. I'm going there. Well, you won't find out anything, nothing. This academy has its own tradition. It has been here, in this very place, for over 300 years. Some rodents break under the pressure sooner or others later, but without exception, all are driven to various forms of psychotic behavior. Oh, come on, Roberta. You can't believe they all committed suicide. Three girls from the same school? No, they were murdered. Or at least driven to do what they did. And that was the very quick trailer for Satan's School for Girls from 1973. This was written by Arthur A. Ross, who we actually have got something from him. Uh, episode 100 was Creature from the Black Lagoon. I can't believe I missed that. Right? And he actually wrote the uh, sequel follow-up, um, The Creature Walks Among Us. Yeah, I got the guy with 532 credits, but I missed that. <laughs> yeah, go figure. The one, <laughs> the one. my my iPad cut that one off, so I don't have that one. <laughs> yeah, it was a fuck it list. Oh, oh, it was a serious fuck it list, but I did it anyhow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine, I guess this one's not going to be safe for kids either. (laughs) (laughs) This was directed by David Lowell Rich, who directed lots of TV movies, but I like the title of this one, Choo Choo and the Philly Flash from 1981. I've seen that and it's great. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's just fun. It's one of those buddy crime kind of movies. Oh. Yeah. I mean, great probably being generous, but it's a TV movie, but it's fun. Yeah. I haven't seen it since probably about 1981, but. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Might have to YouTube that one. Yeah. Yeah. This stars Pamela Franklin as the lead character, Elizabeth. She was in uh, The Legend of Hell House. Oh, that's where I knew her from. Kate Jackson is Roberta. She is definitely. One of those women you saw on that thing that one time. Oh, so she had two long running TV series. So, yeah, yes. well, Dark Shadows, Charlie's Angels, but that actually isn't all. I remember her on Scarecrow and Mrs. King as yes. well, yeah. which I really enjoyed. Which, yeah, and that was her longest running series too. Yeah. Love that show. So these were all hit shows. Dark Shadows is still a marketable property. So, saw that movie not that long ago that sucked. Yes. But, ah, oh, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Tim. Keep doing your own stuff. To stop doing stuff. Yeah. Other properties. Yeah. Lloyd Bachner was Delacroix, and we've talked about him a couple of times. He was in episode 38. Point blank. And episode 373. Just right? a little while ago. Yeah. Isle of Millennium. That's right. Jamie Smith Jackson was Debbie. She was in All the President's Men. Wow. Roy Thines was Clampett, and this was like every student's favorite teacher. And he was in A Beautiful Mind. Joe Van Fleet was the headmistress. She was in Cool Hand Luke and lots of cool stuff. She's been around a long time by that point. By that point. Cheryl Ladd was Jody. Again, we talked about her very recently in episode 373. Millennium. That's right. And also, oddly enough, the arch nemesis of Kate Jackson, (laughs) because they were both on Charlie's Angels, and Kate Jackson was the one that kind of got Cheryl Ladd tossed from the show oh yeah something similar to the 
life and times of, of Shannon Doherty. So does it go back to this? I wonder. <laughs> it does make you wonder if there's some sort of weird curse here going yeah. on. But I mean, Cheryl Ladd's in a blink and you miss it. Character. She really is. Yeah. It took me a while. Like she shows up pretty late. Yeah. Frank Marth was the detective. He was in Captain America. No, not that one. <laughs> this one dates back to 1979. The one with the motorcycle helmet. Yeah, the motorcycle helmet. Yeah. I loved that show. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I... I think I saw the first TV movie, but I don't think I saw the second yeah, one. Yeah, I remember seeing them both. I always get it confused with Greatest American Hero all the time when you think of the Captain oh, the, America from then. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Similar production values. Terry Lumley was Martha, and she was in Brinks, The Great Robbery. Another television movie. And like a lot of these guys are TV people. Gwen Guilford was Lucy. She was the headmistress. And we talked about her in episode 22. Masters of the universe. <laughs> Bill Quinn was the gardener of the school. He was in The Birds and Dead and Buried. And Nolan was Chris. And she was in Dirty Harry. And Bing Russell was the sheriff. He was in episode 105. Oh, I missed that one. The Magnificent Seven, and episode 293. Overboard. He was also in episode 252. Oh, I missed that one. Blackbeard's Ghost. Ah, uh, Blackbeard's <laughs> Ghost. I love it. And you had one more that I didn't catch. Yes, Bob Harks. He is literally that guy you saw in that thing that one time. 532 <laughs> credits, usually as Guy in Bar. But he's been in five episodes. Wow. Yeah, he's been, was in No Way Out, 152. Running Scared, 149. Capricorn One, fairly recently, so yeah. that's 371. Doc Savage, 358. Oh, wow. And The Poseidon Adventure, episode 69. Wow. He's up there with some of our big names in wow. terms of appearances. No kidding. We have to start watching for him. We're going to make a t-shirt, a Bob Harks t-shirt. <laughs> Do you know who Bob yeah. Harks is? <laughs> Just a t-shirt going, I was that guy you saw on that thing that one time. Bob guy, Hart, guy in stealth. bar. <laughs> yeah, Bob Hart, stealth all-star. <laughs> Yeah, 532 credits. Like I, When I saw that, I'm like, holy, that might be one of the biggest lists I've ever seen. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that goes back to the golden age of Hollywood yeah. where that kind of – and most of the stuff you named was 70s. Yeah, 70s and like and in 80s. Yeah. 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 Wow, what a career. For Guy in Bar. Yeah, for Guy in Bar. Yeah. <laughs> they always need yeah. a Guy in Bar. Yeah. yeah. No, this guy was a, like a professional extra from the sounds of it. Yeah. Now, the big setup on this one, as I said, the sister dies, draws Elizabeth to the school. She goes there under a pseudonym. It's much easier to fake your name back then. Mm -hmm. Yes, much. And enrolls in the school, starts going to class, getting to know everybody, and basically becomes best friends with uh, Kay Jackson, Roberta. And she's the one that leads Elizabeth around the school, shows ever everything. And that's when we start to get to know the characters and we start trying to figure out what's going on. We know something weird's happened and we're led to believe it's this science teacher that actually this psychology teacher, Delacroix. Mm. And he's a little bit of a nervous wreck, but you know, he's got all these rats and he's doing this fear maze with the rats to see how they are affected psychologically. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I love the bit where they go to the quote-unquote maze in the basement. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. a really nice touch. Yeah, which really makes you think, oh man, this guy's playing a really yeah. big game with the students. Yeah, before we get too far and I forget, did either of you get kind of like the Suspiria vibe off like the setup of the story? I mean, it doesn't play like Suspiria, obviously, but with the menace in the building and and the, the, the setup with the weird things happening in, a, in an all-women's situation. Yeah. yeah. A little bit, plus the power going out all the time, yeah. having to have those lamps. Yeah, and the weird rooms that shouldn't be there. Yeah, no, I, I was kind of picking up on that subconsciously. I kept thinking about Suspiria. I mean, it certainly doesn't have that visual flair. Not by any stretch. Yeah, but I think they did pretty decently for a TV movie. I feel like the school had a bit of a more gothic feel, but it feels 70s as well. It's a yeah. much smaller school than we get in the remake, which is huge. Yeah, well, yes. in the original film, it's, I don't think it was a girl's college, it was a girl's school. Yeah, right? well, it was a private boarding school. school. Yeah, it was a private boarding school. In the remake, it's an all-girls college. Yeah, right. it's big. It's big, yeah. But a small boarding school makes sense that it would be smaller like that. 
Yeah, so she's kind of looking around, and we know the sister was found hanged. There is a girl at the funeral. This is also in the remake that kind of sets off the story of like, I knew her. She went to this school. I've left the school. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, God, if you're going there, don't tell them you You saw me or where I am. Heard of me or you even know my name. Like, she's really unnerved and she realizes she's already said too much. And later we find out she's died off screen. And it's a, it's a little tough to catch because you only get one scene with her and then you realize they mentioned a name. I'm like, oh, wait, is that the girl from the funeral? Yeah. And they pull the same trick in the remake, although we do see her die. Yes. Yeah. In both cases, it's written off as another suicide. And that's when things start to get a little weird. A little weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's a, a lot of mystery solving in the in, at least in the original like there's a, there's an actual mystery she's looking hunting down clues and yeah. investigating and that's why I think I found it so much more interesting is I feel like I got an investigation yeah and she's going to faculty parties and it's a little weird that the teachers are there with the students yeah. and we get to see that Clampett is really liked among the students and his class is really kind of fun and interactive and and everybody seems to kind of really dig him and not so much with Delacroix. Yeah, I think that was a thread they pulled on in the remake where it's like the cool professor is probably going to be skeevy. And yeah. the one that's really tough on you is pretty much benign. Well, they pretty much combined the two characters of Clampett and Delacroix into the Delacroix character yeah. in the remake. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I liked the presentation of Clampett because... That's the whole thing about the devil, right? Is he'll charm you. And I think that they they captured that, right? Mm-hmm. And that should have been your first clue is the, the is the charming one is the one you need to watch out for. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I mean, you kind of pick up on it because you're like, I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching, I'm like, uh, you know, there's something off about that whole mm-hmm. being most popular teacher. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, you don't trust him. I think for 73, the Mr. X probably worked pretty well. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's the professor who takes too much interest in the female students. That's oh. now something we are kind of very aware of. Boy, did he take interest in the remake. A whole yes. lot of interest. So mm-hmm. much interest. It's, yeah, skeevy, skeevy, skeevy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Having sex with the students. Yeah, and trying to pick up on Beth. Mm-hmm. It's like, why don't we go yeah. have a drink sometime? No. And, well, yeah. And yeah. I mean, it takes a while because there's this secret cabal called the Five. That's kind of your big mystery or who are the Five, but they don't bother introducing enough characters to make you go, oh, that could be the Five or mm-hmm. that could be the Five. <laughs> like, there's only right? like five characters we've gotten to know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that really limits the murderer's row. You're kind of like, well, mystery solved. These are the only people we know. <laughs> They leave notes at the funeral of the sister, so they're using these little notes to draw Beth to the school rather than the investigation drawing her to the school. Yeah, they, they manipulate. They're leaving the hints enough to manipulate her to there. And even though she's lying, Beth is lying to her students about her identity, they know exactly who yeah. she is. Yeah, there's there's no mystery for them. There's no reveal there for her. Although they're, they are successful in some ways, like you do feel like Delacroix is just manipulating this coven as his uh, revolving door of sexual conquest. Yeah. But that seems like a devilly thing to do, doesn't it? It seems like it, yes. It yeah. does, but they went like full witchcraft in the remake, which is like just something that always irritates me. It's yes. like any witch worth her salt will not subjugate themselves to any male entity. <laughs> it's dumb. Well, by the time you get to the end, you realize that Julie Benz was the one using him, not the other way around. True, but still, you're vowing to like, oh yeah, I'm yours forever, blah, blah, blah. No. Yeah, I'm not sure how successful they were with all that. They weren't. They just just weren't. I mean, I didn't like the supernatural. I didn't like this bad CGI right at the beginning, which is really the only time they used that. Yes. Blew their budget on the ghost. Yeah, and then and, yeah, and the, the animal transformations. The animal transformations, yeah. yeah, which were also really hokey. Um, and then the yeah, the climactic scene with the lightning and the 
yeah, like talk about a climactic scene yeah. that was more like a quick orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, it was the, Highlander. Where's the fight? Yeah, yeah, you didn't even chop off a head. It was just she. We see her, her power reawakening that we didn't know she had for forty five minutes, yeah. <laughs> and then yep. suddenly she could read cards, and then she's turning and blowing lights and tossing lightning around and then she just fries everybody <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah it's right. really anticlimactic for a climactic scene and a movie yeah. it's like oh all the five were the bad guy who is satan again oh it may have been the headmistress it might have been the dean or maybe she was just another one of the coven because they reveal this lineage of the five. Yeah. And that was yeah. something that Delacroix was investigating on his own because he's a history teacher. Yeah. Which and made him a lot more interesting. It does. Mm -hmm. It also made us think that maybe he could have been Satan. Yeah. But in the end, nobody was Satan. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Satan's, Satan's off screen Satan, for yeah, that whole Satan, movie. Yeah, Satan was just a being that the witches worshipped. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. only thing I think worked really well in the remake was the misdirect with the mean girl, with the goth mean girl. Yes. That worked. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if that worked that great because well, it you did see at first. her. Yeah. At f when she first shows up, we see her chasing after Beth's sister yeah. and she's leaving the school frantically yeah. and she's going, no, this isn't her fault. She's sympathetic and she has this worried look on her face yeah. and she doesn't know who Beth is when she shows up yeah. and she is just goth and mean. Yeah. And yeah. I think that she needed more time before her demise, sudden demise as well. They should have kept her around to the end. Yeah, well, I would have liked to have seen a bit of a, a character change with her because she really was just mean girl, leave me alone. Yeah. You're, you're over there with the Heathers. Yeah. <laughs> well played. Yeah. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. But yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah, I think that if you wanted people to not know who the five were, she should have stuck around a little bit longer, right? Because you're talking about there was just a lack of characters. So your reveal of who the five were, were there was no reveal, basically, yeah. right? Because you kind of would have been, mm -hmm. yeah, it would have been good where the five were looking at her as a possible fifth, but she didn't have the power they were looking for, which would have been interesting. I mean, there's a little bit of misdirect because she does have her own little group, but we don't get to know much of them. Exactly. That, and that was the point I was trying yeah. to make is if we had gotten to know more about them and more screen time with them, instead of the really drawn out yeah. romance, the romance should have been split up throughout the whole movie rather than like a, a chunk in the middle, which like pulled me right out for a while there. Yeah. I, I mean, it probably would have worked if they would have used the goth chick, whose name I can't remember at the moment, probably when I look at my Lisa? notes. Lisa? Yes, Lisa. If they had used her in such a way where, because we have this intern, male intern, who's helping with filing and things in the office as a part-time gag, who's kicking around, if maybe she had this interest in this outsider, mm -hmm. and that could have maybe caused some jealousy or whatever. Yeah. But right. that would have been at least some motivation for why she was being mean girl. And, and yes. they tried to put that on Julie Benz later. Yeah. With the teacher, which, I mean, we saw nothing like that. It's not, yeah, exactly. It's coming from nowhere. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they pulled her file as part of her investigation. That Actually, that was the entirety of her investigation, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They see, the, see the file drop to the floor, and that's as, that's as far as that yeah. got. Yeah. But because, if there had been something- Well, it can't be her. She's dead now. Yeah. But if, <laughs> yeah, if they had done something yeah. in there that indicate that she'd been caught, like, reading books on the occult or something like that, just to, again, really, like, throw that misdirect in there that she's part of whatever was happening. Yeah. I mean, we saw she was doing something, and I'm not sure why she would sneak into Beth's room cut her hand and then the blood well, all disappears like what was the fuck was that about well and that was and that was huh. supposed to be beth having a vision but it was so clumsy it was very yes. clumsy yeah. i didn't know what the fuck that was yeah. i rewound it three times yeah because yeah it was uh -huh. a vision and she actually talks about the vision later on but you don't know that it's a vision until then no i thought she was just aware of what was happening in the room no it was just a vision <laughs> that was so dumb yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Because that subconsciously, I guess she was suspecting Lisa because she was creepy well, and weird. Subconsciously, and then and what she was seeing was Lisa's quote unquote suicide. Yeah, right. Was she was seeing that before yeah. it happened? But again, because it was so clumsy, and we hadn't established that she has visions until afterwards, it made no sense. Yeah. No, <laughs> it was yeah. Baffling. Well, what was dumb is I just kind of kept sort of expecting that the visions were kind of a connection to her sister and they would help her solve the mystery, but they didn't really do anything at all. 
No, they were just a device for her to tell the story about how her parents passed, which was a waste of time. Yep. Yeah, I don't know why we kept seeing like these little flashbacks of her and her sister's children. Yeah. I mean, it didn't do anything. It didn't move the story forward. I'm like, you have a perfectly good movie here to yeah. to fall back on. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. develop these characters like Lisa, right? Yeah. And and I would have been yeah. fine if they would have followed the same formula of the movie, just adding a little bit here and there. But they deviated so much that it was like, this is not the, what I actually liked about the 73. And yeah, th- that's not what made the 73 successful. Yeah, it's it, they took out all the stuff that made the 73 good. Yeah, they clearly yeah. didn't know what made that work. In the remake, Beth is just, she's an awful investigator. She's, she's not awful. an investigator. <laughs> no. Like she but she goes there to find out what happened yeah. and she sucks at it. <laughs> yeah, she does. I, that's kind of refreshing actually. <laughs> yeah. Right? She, she just stumbles into things and everybody's end, so yeah. capable usually. Yeah. Yeah, in the yeah. end it's this it all happens because they want her there. Right? Yeah. Her investigation doesn't really go anywhere. No, no. no. Everything she's doing is completely pointless. Yeah. They eventually just reveal themselves. Yeah, and as they kind of do in the in the original as well, but that's true. But it everything she was investigating was a misdirect to nowhere. Yeah. But yeah. I was half expecting at a certain point in the remake where they're all there going like, we were waiting for you to figure this out, but you're so fucking slow. <laughs> we decided to just bring you here. Well, for this powerful being, they want part of their coven. They're not doing a lot to bring her in and, and trust her with that. That's how they should have done it. Yeah. And of course, mm-hmm. they take so damn long that their lead witch and with Julie Benz is uh, getting jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if this is the one that's supposed to be your your one, <laughs> you're doing yeah. a shit job. But Julie wanted the job. Of course. Yeah. All right. I'm going to run the trailer for the 2000. We'll be right back. Monday to uncover the truth about her sister's murder. It's just another suicide to them. She goes back to school. We're happy you're here. What she discovers there. She's the one. Is more terrifying than anything she ever imagined. They're tied to the dark side. Shannon Doherty, Kate Jackson, Satan's School for Girls, ABC Monday, 8, 7 Central. That was the trailer for Satan's School for Girls from the year 2000. This was directed by Christopher Leach this time, and he directed Teen Wolf 2, and he also wrote (laughs) Universal Soldier. And the story on this one was by Jennifer Maisel, who did some TV movies, The Assault, Double Wedding, and uh, the screenplay was by Michael Hitchcock, who did Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3. This stars Shannon Doherty, who we just talked about back in 370. I dropped it. You totally dropped it. That's right. Heathers. And she is Beth Hammersmith. They finally get last names. Some of them. Hammersmith. It's a good (laughs) last name. Yeah, it's not bad. Julie Benz was Allison Kingsley. You know her from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Roswell, and at least one season of Dexter. Yep. Yes. Daniel Cosgrove was Mark... Lanch, and this is the male intern we were talking about. He was in Valentine, another kind of a sleeper horror movie, actually. I kind of like Valentine. Oh, yeah. It was a bit of a slasher mystery. Yeah, it was actually quite good. It was quite good. Go check it out. You should. Richard Joseph Paul was Nick Delacroix, and (laughs) I like this. He was in um, a couple of full moon sci-fi movies. Sam, you might remember these. Oblivion and Oblivion 2 Backlash. Uh, You know what? I saw that I'm like... I got to go watch those again. (laughs) Yeah, I actually quite like those. They were written by uh, comic book writer Peter David, and they were a bit of a precursor to what Joss Whedon would do with Firefly. They were sci-fi westerns. Yeah, and they're on Tubi, if I recall correctly. Yeah, well, Full Moon kind of gets around, so if you have the Full Moon channel or Tubi or whatever, you'll probably find them. Yeah. I remember them being quite good, but uh, every time I go back to watch an old full moon, I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, and we've, I'm not going to lie, with doing this podcast, I do find I'm a lot more critical of things than I used to be. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's sort of you have to be in the right mindset yeah. Yeah. for your full moon. You're like, I want something kind of dumb. I want something with a lot of holes. I just want to be entertained. Yeah, back in the 90s, I was forgiven the video quality of it all, but now I turn them on, I'm like, oh boy, I can't get five minutes into them. Yeah. Taraji P. Henson was Paige, and she was in episode 253. The Karate Kid. That's right. 
Amy Castle was Courtney. She was in Laserhawk. Uh, Mandy Schaefer was Hillary. She was in Sabotage. Victoria Sanchez was Lisa Bagley. And you can catch her on the uh, Jack Ryan television series over on Amazon. Yeah, so some of them are still working. Yeah, and she's the goth girl we were talking about. Kate Jackson returns from the original film as the Dean this time. And Irene, oh my God, look at this name. Contagiorius? Let's go with that. She plays <laughs> Jenny, the sister who dies fairly quickly. She was also in a movie called Dead End, just like her character was. Just like her character was, yes. Yeah. And uh, finally, Alan Fawcett was Ruben. This is the next door neighbor to Beth. We see him at the beginning and the end of the film. And he was in episode 355. Yeah, Brick Mansions. Brick Mansions. Yeah. And I could tell that this was shot in Canada. By the cast list. <laughs> Almost <laughs> half the cast was in the TV series of student bodies. Like, yes. And they were regulars. <laughs> like they were like, they, they were all like 40, 50 episodes of this TV series. You could do the same comparison on the 73. A lot of them had the same television show in yeah. common as well. Yeah. Um, which is fine. I mean, I, I, I just thought, found it interesting. I'm like, okay, this is very, very interesting. They must have gone to the set and went, okay, we'll take you, we'll take you, we'll take you, we'll take you. Yeah. Hey, Shannon, Pretty we just much. fired you. Do you want to want some work? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it is it's funny. And I think that's maybe what happened with the 73 is they went to the set of, the, like a, of a TV show that was that was shooting on the set mm -hmm. or, or shooting on the on the lot and went, okay, yeah, you'll do, you'll do. You can't see my finger going, pointing. Wait, you'll, do. Yeah. you'll do, you'll do. Well, Maybe it was spelling as a producer. He's got access. He's just wandering around the lot going, hey, who wants a, to be in my movie? Yeah, we got a script. We're doing a TV movie. Who wants a bonus paycheck? Yeah. Yeah. We just need you for the weekends. We'll shoot it on weekends. We'll get it done for ABC. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And, you know, the, there was a lot of testing, too, with these TV movies of the week. I actually quite enjoyed this about my youth where... They would try out an idea for a TV show. So a lot of these movies of the week yeah. were essentially pilots that never got picked up. Yeah. They're just oh, burning yeah. them off because they spent money on them. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, and they can test the audience too. It's a great that's way right. to do test screenings. Well, I mean, Hercules was about four or five TV movies before getting a series. And then that led to Xena as a spinoff. Yeah. So we know that's a formula that works and uh, they were still doing it in the 90s. Yeah. And it, yeah, it does work. Uh, wasn't the Incredible Hulk TV movie first, then the series? I don't recall. That's, quite yeah, possibly. that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah quite possibly. Battlestar Galactica? Uh, well, that was a theatrical film first. Yeah. And then yeah. they recut it for television yeah. and the well, series started. Yeah. Yeah, and Buck Rogers was actually shot as a television pilot, but it was good enough that it went to theaters and then came back to TV. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a rare opportunity where we get to actually talk some TV and we know some stuff. The odd thing here or there. Yeah, we were there. <laughs> well, yeah, we were there and then we had to be there at a certain time because there was none of this recording crap. You had to be there yeah. Yeah. to watch the show. None of this on-demand stuff. Nope. No, we didn't even have VHS recorders for, well- not until the 80s, really. Yeah. Unless you were rich. Unless you were rich, yeah. 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 And I wasn't. We didn't even have a TV until I was 10. Oh, wow. We we did all my life, but it was like, again, you have those three channels, and that's it. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> I do remember my first TV was black and white. I thought all the Bond movies were in black and white until we got a <laughs> color TV. I'm like, oh, these are in color? <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this concludes when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Just before you drop out, we're getting back to the movie. I definitely didn't like this 2000 remake. It was so clumsy and sloppy. The whole thing made me go, like, how did Spelling let this happen? Yeah. Yeah. With the amount of successes he had, and then you watch it, and you're like, this was a successful movie. What what happened? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what, what happened there. Because, I mean, yes. I mean, Shannon Doherty is really good in this, but she can't hold it together on her own. Well, you, you can only do so much with a crappy mm -hmm. script and people who don't want to be there. Yeah, and it does feel like somewhere along the way, they just didn't have a full script. It's like, hey, it's psychic powers. Lightning. You're, you're going to fry them with lightning. Yeah, that's hot now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. We haven't done that in a while. Let's yeah. let's get that. Let's get on that. Yeah, we haven't and done that like, since okay, yesterday. We just, need, we just need hot people. And we need a couple of mean girls and a few blondes and, oh, plot? What plot? We don't need a plot. We just have to have them in 
looking a certain way and then we're fine. Yeah. Hey, Shannon, you were in Heather's. Give me some pointers. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and Shannon's like, well, Heather's had a story? <laughs> They had a bomb, not psychic abilities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which caused a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you Nicely did done. There. See? I, s- I told you all we weren't done with the puns. Yeah, but just the time it was me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, this you is, just assumed. This, this is the shooting star of puns when Sam joins in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The first one, I mean, we haven't really talked about the first one because it was simple and elegant in the way it was told. I think so. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. when you have those kind of limitations, you don't have the, the kind of special effects stuff. And I don't think that was in the script anyway to have that kind of stuff. Deaths are happening off screen. So there's no blood. It's television yeah. after all. And it was yeah. far stricter television in 73 than there is now. So no blood. You're seeing the deaths off screen. The budgetary limitations, I'm sure, for a TV movie were about the same as a single episode of a television yep. show, and they weren't very high. Yeah. So with those kind of limitations, it forces creativity. And I found that they kept me going on this ride of misdirection. I mean, I'm not as successful. We're savvy watchers, but- I can see that it probably yeah. worked in 73. Oh, it was sure. working enough with me that I, yeah. you know. En- enjoyed the watch, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that, the thing that makes it work is the fact that you know it's called Satan's School for Girls. I mean, yeah. that's the name of the movie. So you are expecting something dark and yeah. you're expecting Satan, yeah. right? And they don't give you Satan, not until the end, yeah, right? And if it weren't for that one moment, it just would have felt like a, another story about a guy who's delusional yeah. and- yeah. Crazy cult guy. Yeah, crazy cult guy. Right. So that's I think that's why it worked. And they just completely threw all of that great stuff out the window mm-hmm. to give us this craft meets Buffy meets whatever other spelling I'm sure teen horror drama that, that was out there at the time. Yeah. I'm sure spelling really loved that last little bit of the original where, you know, he's had walked in. He was the, everybody burned up in the fire of the school. The yeah. fire yeah. that started at the school, and then we see Clampett again outside, even though he burned up in the school, and then fade away. That's the part I think was his favorite part. And then he took that ball and rolled with it in two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that was probably my least favorite part. Like, oh, I like the ambiguousness of it all. Yeah, I know. Like, I, would've, I would have loved it if this guy just thought he was the devil. Yeah, it would have worked yeah. so much better for me. It, it, it took a, a good movie and made it an okay movie for me. Yeah, because there's no real yeah. witchcraft going on. No. I mean, there's certainly psychological manipulation, which is why you think it's Delacroix. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I felt like this was some Batman villain, like the, the Scarecrow doing this grand experiment with the students. What a great idea. It was a great idea, and I loved that part. It just didn't quite go, didn't have enough balls to go there. Yeah. Although there's that great moment where he shows up and he's terrified. Yes. Right. Oh, my God. And that's like, okay, I knew it wasn't him, but that really worked well for me. And if you were watching that for the first time in 73, oh yeah, that probably would have like thrown you completely off your rails. Oh, yeah. He jumps out a freaking window. Actually, I thought that was it. Like, he'd be just lying there, uh, twitching. (laughs) But he gets up and runs away. (laughs) Right? That was, like, a very epic moment. Like, okay, in the remake, like you say, they aren't big moments. But honestly, this this one does, like, huge moments that are very small. You don't have to do much, but it, it does impact. Yeah. Yeah, and this is where I say, like, necessity is the mother of invention on this. And they really kind of had to be clever in how they presented it. And as far as, like, old TV movies go, this really had me engaged. I'm oh, yeah. I'm 100% in agreement with you. Do you remember the part with the painting? And she's grabbing the painting trying to find where this is in the school? Because mm. the I think it's Debbie who has – he's painted it and she's scared, but the background is real. Is this the 2000 one you're talking about? No, 73. Oh, okay, because they did pull that trick yeah. with the hanging yeah. tree. Yeah. Yeah, but that one, ugh. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Why do they call it the devil's place? Well, supposedly it's haunted. Everyone says that tree was used to hang people during the 1600s when the witch trials were going on. That's why it's dead. It's cursed from all the evil that's going on here. Well, either that or the termites. 
But still, once in a while, they find mutilated dogs and cats here. Check this out. An inverted pentagram, sign of the devil. That was in my dream, too. Really? Let's get out of here. Fine with me. You mess with this stuff and it pulls you in. Do you believe in the devil? Well, I don't think there's anyone with horns and a tail running around, but I think there's definitely something out there. I just intend to keep the hell away from it. Things have been pretty strange around here, that's for sure. Like, nobody noticed the pentagram carved in the tree and how right. freaking creepy this thing is. Nobody noticed. Nobody and the noticed. intern's like, oh, that's the devil's tree. It's just out here. <laughs> yeah. And he so casually says, yeah, there's a pentagram carved it and everything. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's just it's so throwaway. It's yeah. just so sad. <laughs> Why do you have this here still? Why would you tear this down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, why is this a hangout? Like, why? Because yeah. he mentions that it's like a hangout. Yeah, I mean, I could see the goth kids hanging there. Yeah. <laughs> I think he even mentions that the, there were some deaths there. At oh, witches were hung there. Is yeah, I think yeah. what he yeah. said. It's like, yeah, and this makes it cool. How? <laughs> There's a lot of what, how, huh? Moments in that in the remake. Yeah, well, like you talk about it being ten minutes longer, and what's wild is they padded it with nothingness. When there's yeah. so many opportunity to pad it with stuff that would make more sense or move it to where it needs to go. Yeah. I mean, in the end, I would have been okay with the whole witch story if it had made sense. Yes. Yeah. If they would maybe tipped off a little bit where, you know, she sees her sister hanging and then has a vision, not just yeah. a flashback of her at the funeral. Yeah. Like, that's a flashback of her as kids. But if they would have hinted at that earlier i might have been okay with the whole card scene where she's like guessing the cards yeah because i actually yeah. didn't mind the scene i thought it was a little charming even though your actor is fairly terrible shannon doherty's carrying that scene yeah mm -hmm. yeah and like i said it could have been charming and and interesting but because it felt shoehorned in i just like completely checked out on it yeah and it could have been such a great device where she's getting visions but some of them might be misdirects like she's seeing something that her cohorts, the other five have done, but she doesn't see the face. Like, it would be really interesting to explore that, but they didn't do anything with it. Yeah. See, that would have been interesting, right? She's getting her clues to these visions of, of these horrible things that they've done, but mm. now we're remaking a remake. Um, again, because <laughs> that's <laughs> what we do. help it. Can't turn it off. But yeah, then, then, yeah, then you'd have something to grab onto. It's like, okay, what do these clues mean? Hey, it's been 20 years. They can uh, have another go at it. For sure. You're off the hook on the game, by the way. I totally forgot to look up the Rotten Tomatoes this week. Yes. <laughs> but I do have IMDb ratings, you can guess. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, so are we talking which one is which? Which one do you want to start with? Well, start with, start with yeah, start with the 73, and then we'll do the 2000. What do you think? Uh, what, do you, what do you think uh, the IMDb rating is? I doubt there was uh, enough reviews for Rotten Tomatoes anyway. Probably. Yeah. 5.6? All right. I'm going to go 6.3. Oh, Trish was uh, close as 5.2. Oh, Ooh, not, not as well received as I thought. Um, well, I mean, modern critics, yeah, right? There was no enough. IMDb in 1973. All they yeah, had were no. ratings. That's right, yeah. And watch yeah. numbers, and a lot of people watched it. So there you go. That's how they know it was successful, is lots of people watched it. Yeah. What do you think about the 2000 TV movie? 2.9. Hmm. 4.6. Trish is on fire, but she keeps going with the sixes instead of the twos. 4.2. Very close. Very close. I thought about it, but then I'm like, no. And I feel like they're fairly accurate. They are well. fairly accurate, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I still stand by my 2.9. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because even if you forgive the story, I can't forgive the special effects. The oh. animal transformations were great, but the the wispy. I, I felt like like they they took that scene from Ghostbusters with the ghost in the library, yeah. and did it about the same, even though it, it was like fifteen and years later. Yeah. They and by with the animal transformations, they were showing they had the technology and the talent to do good special effects. 
for the time. Yeah. I mean, TV oh, yeah. doesn't have, especially even in 2000, that would have been very expensive to even put those spots in there. Yes. Compared to what they're doing now on television. Yeah. But yeah, they weren't great. I forgave it because it was 2000, early 2000s. Yeah, so. I, I know. Yeah, they, but they, um, we talked about The Craft, and The Craft did it better. And that was a feature movie prior. feature movie budget. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a good comparison. No. I think they blew their budget on the creature transformations. Went, oh, shit, we have no money to do the final scene. And that's why yeah. we get cheesy yeah. lightning. That's why we get the cheesy lightning. Yeah. I'm sure of it. That's so what like, happened. We blew our money on the ghost and the transformation stuff. Although those happened pretty quick. You know, that but was still. similar to what they did on Buffy. Yeah. And, you know, the ghost, honestly, it probably would have looked better if they'd done it Ghostbuster style practical. Yeah. With his- it would have been better if they'd have left it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did not need to see this terribly CGI'd, wispy, cloud form into some it, scary ghost girl and it just completely undoes the the movie yeah early on yeah and then the mm-hmm. crows too yeah oh we didn't talk about the other ending because we you know oh. we've got we've got that we think it's over moment and then the devil fades away in 1973 yeah. well we have a similar yeah. moment a year later she has married her neighbor who yeah. was there for her at the beginning of the film they have a kid and it's no. got to be over a year later because that kid's pretty fucking big. Oh, well, it said a year well, later. But... Well, that kid's pretty fucking big. <laughs> yeah. Well, what she did is she went after that, after she burned everybody up, she went straight home, banged him. Yeah. And then they got married. See, it would have been cooler if it was the- We the... don't know if he had kids from an existing marriage. No. You know what? Instead of doing what they did, if they had done this thing where it's the intern's kid. Oh. That oh, see, been... I, I thought it was going to be the baby that had red eyes in a weird way. That, That's just what I thought. Uh, that, I was kind of thinking, too, that, that, that you'd see the power from the kid, yeah. not what we got. No, no. Instead, the crows start forming again around them. So she really didn't do anything. I guess it just took them a while to reform their bodies because the crows start showing up with the red eyes and glowing. I'm like, oh, man. Well, like, like, no way the, this was good enough to have a sequel. No, no <laughs> way. Yeah. I, I mean, if they'd explained it was, the, it was the previous generations of the five. Yeah. That would have been more interesting, but they don't explain it. They just show up. It's yeah. like, no, yeah. no, no. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Definitely not safe for kids. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Never are. <laughs> no. No, we're not. <laughs> Usually I have the potty mouth. This is very entertaining for me. <laughs> I had a Henry Rollins moment there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I was kind of glad to do this. I, normally, we don't get to look at TV movies very often. We have done them here and there where, like, Piranha. We did. Piranha. We um, covered the yeah. TV. 50-Foot Woman. Oh, yes. Yes, mm-hmm. Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. Yep. The musical version of the... Reefer Madness. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Reefer Madness. Yeah. But usually Magic. they're remakes of movies that we wanted to discuss usually there's a feature film as the basis like you said but you know what i'm glad we did this because uh, like if i probably never would have seen the original mm-hmm. and i'm glad mm-hmm. i did I, i'm genuinely glad i saw the original yeah i quite enjoyed it i it hated you for cast. the remake but <laughs> yeah i wasn't too happy with myself either <laughs> <laughs> yeah the phone got picked up a lot more during the remake <laughs> i yeah i was doing the same thing i was tuning it out from yeah. time to time I'm like oh god this movie sucks so bad <laughs> i was glad at least one of them was good yeah me too yeah like i mean it like you say the, the the original i mean the the title tells you something supernatural but most of the movie again is just an investigation which makes a lot of sense yeah see i'd love to see a theatrical version of the original film like if you're going to do a remake yeah. Work off those bones. There are a few things that could be done a little bit better than that. Um, mm-hmm. There are a couple things that you could pull from the remake, like the mean girl, goth girl. You could bring her in, but use her to better effect. Oh, yeah. So many ways you could have used her that yeah. would have been interesting. Right. And having that history of the five, I liked that part of it where they gave you a little history about the school and these people in it. Beyond that, yeah. the rest of the remake can go in the dumpster. <laughs> well, and I, what I wanted, I guess that was the other thing too, I was really kind of disappointed by. She comes to see him about information on the five and he just tries to seduce her. Wouldn't it be interesting if he actually told her something? Well, it certainly would have been a lot more interesting out. for us, the viewer. Yeah, yeah. Instead of her going, you know what? 
I'm just going to find out for myself. Yeah. I don't want to sleep with you. Thanks. Which was fine. It's what she should have said. Yeah. But it was all really gross. It was just, he should have just taken the L and like, all right, let's at least compare notes here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, this is so we I as have. an audience learned something. Yes. Right? Because that's that whole bit just felt so pointless. It was so frustrating. It was yeah. a waste of two minutes of screen time as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Exactly. And then Julie Ben shows up and recites some stuff that Beth and, and uh, Delacroix said to each other and, and then kills them. Yeah. Which I thought they were going to boink first. That was the whole point. She's she like, She did oh. say she was going to do that. And yeah. I felt, I'm like, well, come on. You put on the nice underwear. Put the <laughs> Yeah. That was her misdirect for him, though. Yeah. I guess. It's a delicate cycle. You have to hand wash all that shit. Yeah, I got to make yeah. sure everything's fine. I mean, honestly, it's just a lot of effort. Yeah. So I do actually have a question here. So in 2000, 23 years ago, we would have been the target audience for this film. Oh, How do you, so. what, what do you think you would have thought of it then? This just popped into my head and I'm just like curious now. Uh, you know what? Generally, I wasn't watching these TV movies of the week anyway, because yeah. I always thought they were badly made. I honestly don't know what I would have thought about it. I mean, I wasn't a fan of Charmed either, so I probably still wouldn't have liked it. I know I would have hated it because at the time I didn't like Buffy, I didn't like X-Files. Yeah, I I, actually didn't like Buffy either. Yeah, I I appreciate it a lot more now. I did like X-Files, but this wasn't nearly as well made as X-Files. Well, there were some X-Files episodes that were as bad as this. I'm sorry, but there were. Oh, sure. I mean, it happened, especially when they moved from Canada to LA. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, I that just, was a big dive. Yeah, I was just curious because, like, like I said, sometimes I, I have to sort of take a step back and go, okay, who's this audience? And that's certainly not me as a 53 year old man. I'm not the audience for this film. But it, yeah, when this came out, I mean, I wasn't even really watching TV, let alone stuff like this. See, yeah. I probably would have tuned in for like, ooh, there's witchcraft. It's kind of interesting. But I would have been very upset by just the whole thing being just. Pointless. Yeah, I might have tuned in, yeah, for the title because the title's like Satan's School for Girls. It's like, ooh, oh wait, TV movie, no tits, uh, out. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, I I don't know. I might have been thinking something similar, but yeah, 1990, I probably, I might have seen the ad, but if it conflicted with something I actually did enjoy, mm -hmm. I always knew TV movies were usually terrible, so I just never bothered. Yeah, yeah, good point. Because yeah, this was like right in the middle of the renaissance of supernatural TV, right? X Files, Buffy, Angel, I think was on by then, and yeah, so I think much more. That, that, this was definitely yeah. heavily motivated by what the teenage audiences were yeah. watching. Yeah, and we weren't it, and I'm definitely not it now. Well, I mean, I guess I would have been it, but no, I still would have been a little older than that than the teen audience. But yeah, I would be getting into my later twenties. Yeah, we did, we missed that window, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I I don't think I even would have enjoyed it. In my, like. Well, it's 16 or 17. Nine, yeah, 2000. Oh, nah, yeah. wouldn't no, have. I would definitely been too old for this. I would be on my way to film school around that point. Yeah. Pretty close. Well, I mean, close, if yeah. I had been years. 17 at the time this thing came out, I might have tuned in and I might have been okay with it. Because again, you say as you get older, you don't have the eye for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're a lot more forgiving when you're younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're, like I said earlier, is, is I'm a lot more critical than I than I used to be even a few years ago. Mm -hmm. When I watch uh, these films, we've trained ourselves to look for things that we would like to improve. Yeah, you do a bad camera shot now, it can pop me out of a movie, so. (laughs) (laughs) Bad CGI, again, I'm out. Yeah. Well, if you have a TV movie or just any suggestions in general, let us know what you'd like to hear us cover next over on our social media, at Invasion Remake on Twitter, Invasion of the Remake on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, you can email us your suggestions, your corrections, and your comments, and of course, your fan challenges. And with those fan challenges, we usually have a couple of rules, nothing too crazy. Uh, We don't want them to be uh, newer than 20 years old. I usually have a 20-year cutoff. Why remake a new movie? And I usually don't want them to be too good, although you can sometimes convince me to do one if I'm not looking too hard at it. <laughs> and You've got to learn to bait the trap. Yeah, it's that's gotta right. It's got to have a good title, have a different hook, Yeah, maybe a little weird. That's what you got to do. If it was an Oscar winner or did huge box office, we're probably not going to do it. But if it's uh, something you think you could sneak under the fence, got to 
got an interesting title or an interesting hook and isn't all that well known, yeah, got a shot. That's half the fun is to see what you can sneak in under the radar. <laughs> if you've got my interest and we do the, the episode. And we've had some really good ones. So The leprechaun romance one still boggles <laughs> me that they got it to you, but it was funny. <laughs> I sat on that one for a good year, almost. Yeah. Well, yeah. when I saw a Leprechaun, I'm like, yeah, we'll do it, but I'm going to do it in March. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was fun. Yeah, we've had lots of good suggestions, so send them my way, uh, Invasion of the Remake at gmail.com, and I will reply to you one way or the other, whether I like the idea or not. I'll definitely correspond with you, and if you didn't get one through, it didn't happen, try again. Don't feel dejected. We, you know, make another suggestion and might like that one better. And if you did get an email saying, hey, you know, I, I kind of dig that, we'll do that. Trust me, it's on a list. We do yeah. kind of spread these things out sometimes. We have our own things we want to do. So keep listening. It could pop up in the near future. Speaking of the near future, we're going to be down at the uh, Calgary Expo on the Stampede Grounds here in Calgary this year. We're going to do a live show. And we had to pick something because we're up on the stage. We don't have the opportunity to show you a movie. So we picked... Batman and Robin, we know everybody's seen it, we know everybody hates it. So you can come and join us Friday, April 28th at 5 o'clock in the Palomino Rooms at the Calgary Expo for a live show of Invasion of the Remake, and you can help us remake Batman and Robin, and maybe we can make a really cool version of that movie together with your ideas so watch that movie before you come down and have your fantasy casting and we will use mm -hmm. your fantasy castings in in that episode if we can if we can yeah absolutely so we're gonna we're gonna try to get as much audience participation in that as uh as that is coming up soon. So if you're in the Calgary area or if you're going to be in Calgary for the Calgary Expo, come on down on Friday at 5 o'clock over in the uh, Palomino rooms. I don't know what room we're going to be in yet, but look at your schedules. It'll be in there. And yeah. uh, join us. They'll have uh, events, stuff in the hallways as well. But yeah, this is going to be fun doing doing this with a live crowd. So we're going to be <laughs> Doing It'll something be a first. Yeah. yeah. It'll be our first live show. We've thought about yeah. doing it for a while and we got the invite. Well, I'm like, well, we can't turn that down. No, we right? cannot. Yeah. Yeah. Come join us and we'll also be wandering around all weekend. So if you see us in the hallways and I'm getting a sketch or something in the art, you'll probably find me in Artist Alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, outside of the, the podcast of it, I will probably be in Artist Alley most of the weekend or at panels. Yeah. I'll panels. be at work. <laughs> I'll be buying t-shirts. Love t-shirts. <laughs> so yeah, come on down and join us at the Calgary Expo. It's going to be a hoot. You can buy your tickets at calgaryexpo.com. Tickets for our event? There are none. Once you got your ticket to the Calgary Expo, it's free. So yeah. some free entertainment from us for you and your opportunity to be part of the show and we will present it to the world. So yep. you will be on an episode if you come down. Another favor you could do us is uh, spread the word, give us a five-star rating and a short review over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts and listen. It helps get more. Your balls. On the show. And uh, you can also direct your friends to our website. Invasion of the remake.wixsite.com slash podcast. And there are lots of links to other podcasters there. So if uh, people don't have a particular app or whatever, they can find a way to listen to the show via the website. And there's also a link to our store. Click the store button. It'll take you to our T public store. Where we got well over 70 designs that you can apply to t-shirts, mugs, posters, PPE masks, magnets, stickers, totes, and even pillows. Put your face on an Invasion of the Remake logo. Or just, you know, snuggle us. Snuggle Hold us. us tightly. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got lots of cool designs. You're bound to find something you like. And if you follow us on our social media... You can also uh, keep up with whenever there's a T Public sale because sometimes we'll do a flash sale, and mm -hmm. 
you never know when there's going to be one. So uh, if you're following it on our social media, you'll you'll see when those come up. We'll try to let you know. And you can also like create a profile over on TeePublic so you get notified when sales happen. And also when new product comes up from artists, you can follow them like you can on a social media site. You can follow your favorite mm-hmm. artists. So you can follow us on TeePublic as well. Yeah, and you only see the stuff that's cool instead of all that garbage that other people put out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to disparage some of the other designers. No, not the designers. I'm talking about like other social media. Like oh, yes, all, like, yeah, the, no, the, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is probably the most friendly social media you're going to find because it's just products of cool stuff and people have worked really hard on. That you already know you like. Yeah. Yeah. Like us. Like us. That's right. All right. Well, we had fun with this episode. It was a little different. And uh, Nugget, this has been a bit of an experimental year. We've been trying some uh, different movies and diving into some 70s stuff and um, having a lot of fun. We haven't done a ton of oh, 70s yeah. stuff. So. Until this year. Until now this like, year. Now Jay can't yeah. get away from it. Yeah, I'm not sure how <laughs> that happened. Because <laughs> it's not like I know yeah. the 70s very well. Because <laughs> you were just a young and. I was. I was just, I, I missed the first three years. <laughs> yeah. We were so little. That's right. But it turns out there's some cool stuff in the 70s. So Yeah, and to be fair, like I said, I didn't have a TV till I was 10. So I was almost out of the 70s by the time I started watching television. So That's right. All right. Well, we'll catch you next week with, uh, yeah, we're going to remake something. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we'll let you know. <laughs> I, I I want to drop a hint, but I don't have one yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> wasn't that prepared today. <laughs> but I'm going to try to do that more because it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Until then, I've been Jason. I'm always Sam. And I continue to be Trish. And we are out of here. Some rodents break under the pressure sooner or others later, but without exception, all are driven to various forms of disorientation, a kind of random wild action that humans might call psychotic behavior. Now, the subjects are in abject terror. Let's examine what they're afraid of. Roberta. Well, it looks like they're more mad than scared to me. It's their terror that motivates their anger. The same is true of human beings. We're all apt to react more strongly to terror than any other emotion. To react violently, even to kill out of terror. But don't let this experiment fool you. Humans don't show their terror as do rodents running and screeching. Sometimes terror can break down all the fibers of resistance so that so that a complete passivity takes over. And human reaction, though passive, is most dangerous in this state of terror. Elizabeth, what have you gotten out of this experiment so far? Well, I'm not really sure. Do you want us to recognize the terror element or the motivation to violence? Jody. Beats me. I'm more lost than the rodents are.